Hello everyone, it's Giga Beef here and today we're going to be talking about the flea market with tips and tricks which will help you ultimately optimise the cash that you can get out of your items. I see players leave money on the table every day and often losing less is gaining more, so stick around and let's get going. Okay, so first things first, you need to be level 10 to get access to the flea market. Once you're there, you can only sell find in raid items on the flea currently, and the find in raid tag means that items that were either spawned into a raid instance by the game or crafted in the hideout. Items brought by a PMC do not count, so if you kill another player, you cannot sell the gear they brought into raid with them, but items on scavs, raiders, and spawned loot does count as find in raid. This is also the same for player barters, as you need a find in raid item to be able to transact with those barters on the flea market. There is a flag on items that are fine in raids so that you know which is which in your inventory easily. Next I want to talk about hotkeys. Hotkeys are especially important to navigating the flea market. The first one is the escape key which is very useful for getting rid of windows. This seems really really obvious and really basic but once we've refreshed the flea market and you wait for a second these orders will already have been removed so when we try to press purchase, oh we can't because it was already purchased, you can use the escape key to get rid of this window. The next key that is extremely useful is F5, which is the same key as refresh in your web browser, but this allows you to refresh the marketplace and get an update on what the new offers are. You can see in the corner over here in the top right whether you're actually able to or not, so you can't just spam refresh it. Once you press it, this thing goes grey for a second, and by the time it comes back, then you're allowed to refresh it again. Until then, it doesn't matter how many times you try to press the key, you can't refresh it until this grey circle reappears. That's just to stop people from spamming refresh on the market and overloading the servers. The final useful key is the Y key. Once you have pressed purchase on an item on the flea market, you can then press the Y key. It does actually say down here either Y or N. If you press Y, it automatically tries to buy one. So this is actually only useful if you're trying to buy things in ones. It's not very good for buying ammo because ammo normally comes in a stack of 30, 60, 100, something like that, and buying them one by one is extremely painful. But this really does help speed up and allow you to grab stuff off the flea market really quick. And sometimes in front of other players, other people who are doing the same thing might be in front of you too but it gives you a fighting chance of getting something decent on there. So next thing I want to talk about is about flea market reputation. You can see the number here which represents your flea market rep and this ultimately determines the number of slots that you have. You can see at 34.7 I have five slots, you start off with three, but this number goes up very very slowly and the important thing is, don't worry too much about the formula, but the important thing to know is that this goes up based on the value of trades that you do and not based on the number of trades that you can do. So it really is something that just goes up over time and naturally gets if you use the flea market a lot. One of the flea market concepts that I want to talk about just before we get into the actual flea market mechanics themselves is the flea market fees. So it's important to understand these, they scale with the price of the item using the internal reference price that BSG has set. There is a formula but loosely what you need to know is that if you try to sell an item that is priced low internally within the BSG system, a great example of this is Santa hats, so they could get really expensive because they're not being dropped anymore and people just like to play around with them when they've got lots of money. If you price them too high, the fee ends up being more than the item itself. So I actually have one here we can go and have a look at. These aren't very expensive within Tarkov from the concept of the traders. So if you tried to sell a Santa hat back to the traders, it really would only be a few thousand rubles. Now people are going to be willing to buy these things for 25,000. You can see there are actually not any on the flea market at all at the moment. If I try to add this, that's going to have an 8,000 fee. Now if we take this to a stupid level and put it up for 50,000 for example, then the flea market fee is actually going to be 1.4 million. This fee ends up being ridiculous because the fee scales exponentially and not linear with the price of the item. So the fee can end up being way more than the actual price of the item itself. So this is just something to bear in mind with lo very low priced items that end up in high, high demand. This, by the way, is normally how people manage to wreck themselves by accidentally putting up a low priced ammo for the whole stack value rather than by round, which costs potentially up into the millions and fees, which if they have on them gets vaporized when the offer gets listed and you can't get it back. So just be really careful of that one, that's one I see on Reddit all the time. So next up on default filters, in terms of flea market filters I pretty much don't have anything on except for remove bartering offers and sometimes show functional items, this is normally what I keep on. Unfortunately this removes trader barters as well, but there's no way to have trader barters and not player barters. Except in very limited circumstances as a way to get around crazy flea market fees, all the player barters are pretty much a waste of time. So I exclude these from every search that I do because I never really want to look at them. These days if you change some of your filters and you want it to save, you can click this button which means it'll save it for the next time you go into the flea market and be your default view. This is actually really really handy, this used to not be the case and this is really useful. Okay, so you've come off a run and you want to most efficiently sell your stuff on the flea. 
Speed of item turnover really should dictate the order because of the limitation of slots, you want items that will go straight away to be placed first and leave the slow burn ones until later. There is nothing more annoying than running out of slots and still having loads of items to offload. So the fast turnover items, what you want to do with these is list them slightly higher up. People get bored and they want to buy higher because they can't buy things from the bottom of the list because either they're not using the Y key or sometimes it just doesn't work out. There's a ton of people looking at it. Bolts is a great example. This is a super, super high turnover item. Every time you refresh, pretty much the list changes and is completely different. If we want to sell on here, what we can do is we can look at the list and we can see, well, how often do these things turn over? Every time we press the refresh button, pretty much all the first half of the offers are gone. And if we look at where things are kind of standing, then there's a whole set of like 42s here, 419, 41900s. So if you slotted your thing in at 41899, that is almost certainly going to go. People who are putting them down at 25, 26 and 33 just to try to get them to go quickly, they're wasting their money because this guy's basically lost 15,000 rubles because he could literally have put it in here and he would still have sold basically instantly. If you're looking at items that turn over a bit slower, and that includes a lot of weapons mods like handguards, so looking here at the RSAS Remington Arms handguard, when we refresh this you see the list doesn't really change at all, and that just means that the frequency of player trades on this particular item are just not very high. If I've got an item to sell like this, then if I have some slots to spare and I might be going off to do a raid or go and do something different, I might be tempted to slot it in here at like 19998 or 19997. I quite like using 7 or 8 at the end because it means that if somebody else comes in with 999, I'm still very slightly above them if we both put them in at the same time. To try to avoid that problem, once you're in the add offer screen and you've added all the things that you need to, realise that you can actually also press refresh from inside here just before you press place offer and this will allow you to make sure that you have the most up to date market information so that the market hasn't moved and you're putting your item either too high or way too low if someone's come and bought them all out so you can still use F5 within this screen, it's quite useful. However, if you're really keen to get them to sell, you might want to consider just putting it in right at the top. It might be worth it to you to get it cleared out, especially if you have a ton of things and only three slots to go through. Some really slow items take a good while to sell, and this one is a good example. If you see red times in the list, be careful and typically put them up last before anything else because the listings aren't going straight away. Red means it's going to get to the end of its listing time. As you can see, especially if you push through to the next few pages where people have put them up really too high to sell quickly, basically if red timers are on the front page, it means that the item is very low turnover and you should really consider putting it as quite a high position, otherwise you may not get that sale to happen at all. Before going to the fleet, it is actually always worth checking for the trader prices before you go and list something. Some items trade very close to the trader price, capper items for example, as you can see with this battered antique book, these are going for 37817. Now if we go to therapist, who buys these, it's 37817. This is basically people who are just trying to increase their flea market reputation, because remember they are actually having to pay a fee for this, so they really would have been better off just saying to therapist. Sometimes you can find these to flip on the market. Normally those disappear quite quickly because people who are selling them have normally already checked the trader before they put them off on the fleet. So if you put something up that's mispriced or another player puts something up that's low priced, then they will usually buy it and sell it straight back to the trader. Even if you're going to use an item, sometimes it's worth flipping on the flea market if it's finding raids. So what you do is you list yours and you buy it back from the trader. This is especially true with some of the gunsmith tasks and buying four grips, once you can get them from the trader yourself, it's still worth selling them at high level first to maximize your cash. A great example is imagine if you pick up an RK1 foregrip in raid. These things sell for 40,000 on the fleet, but you can buy them from Skier at 20. So if you find one and you have the ability to buy one from Skier and you do actually want to use one, you're still better off selling it on the fleet, buying it back from Skier, and pocketing yourself about 18k after flea market fees. A concept that is kind of similar to this is when you're producing things in the hideout and when you're buying items to make things in the hideout. So pile of meds is a really good example. So here we can see there's a whole list of stuff. Now if you need pile of meds for things, then you want to be buying from the bottom and you can get these at a really, really cheap price sometimes, like down to 13k as you can see here. If you're producing pile of meds though, you want to sell them all the way up to here because you can sell them in a big stack and you can leave them up. You can see that's what this guy's done with 25, is 16,988. Now this gap is actually bigger than the flea market fee. And so even if you're both producing and using pile of meds, you're better off buying non finding raid ones to use in your crafts and you're then better off selling the finding raid ones on the flea market. So you're effectively utilizing the full range of trades in order to maximize the money that you're making.
So one thing to watch out for is that certain weapons are just much better in parts than trying to sell them as one whole unit. So I got a TX-15 in the scav case, and this is effectively the default one that you get from Skears. This thing comes with a muzzle brake, stock, a nice pistol grip. Now what I could have done is just taken off some of these parts and then just sold the whole unit up for sort of 65, 70k, something like that. But I spotted that this was actually a lot better to split up and do it in lots of different bits and pieces. So you can probably see that a lot of people have taken off the suppressor because that's usually the bit that's quite expensive. So that's first thing first, that's a good thing to do. One thing that a lot of people don't realise is that the pistol grip that comes with this, this MRE pistol grip, so if we look at this, these things are going for about 30k on the fleet. Now bear in mind that people are selling the whole unit for 68k, so that's one thing that's really, really useful to be able to split the gun part and, and have a look and make sure that you're getting maximum value. So if you sell that, you've got this Raptor charging handle, which is a decent amount of money as well. That's another 20,000. If we go back to... The TX-15 again. This time we can see that the handguard is going for about 15k and when you add it all up you actually end up with a few hundred thousand rubles. It ends up being really really quite good. So watch out for this. This is, can be an amazing money maker rather than just slapping it up on the flea market without thinking too much. Just make sure that you're actually taking off the pistol grips and looking at the value of everything because each individual component is fine in raid as you can see here. You've got the fine in raid tag on everything. So these people are selling for 70,000, they've got a pistol grip on there that they could sell for 20k on its own, and this thing for 15, so we're already talking 35k. The last thing I wanted to talk about is how to buy fuel. This has been in vogue a lot over the past couple of weeks, so this might get out of date fairly quickly, but I think it's worth putting in there anyway in case there's any other items that come up that are really useful from the traders. What you need to notice is that the trader time here within his own view the 1208 is different to that on the flea market and there's a slight bit of desync between those two and i'm not entirely sure why to be honest but if you look here there's a good kind of like three minutes ish between what it says on the fleet and what it says within the actual trader screen view and i think when people say they're struggling to buy fuel they have actually made it a bit easier recently but as i've noticed you could still buy it after the refresh but i think they're trying to buy it from this screen now what i've always done is look between these two things once this timer hits zero what you then want to do is just wait it out and flick back to this screen and i've typically been able to buy it from this screen first but it's only ever after this timer is finished so you just basically wait here and keep flicking back to jaeger going to two and pressing refresh and normally once it's in stock you actually have a minute to buy it but this way i've actually never missed out if i've been there for the reset timer i've never missed out on getting a fuel tank maybe that's to do with my servers or, or whatever and i know some people i've seen complaining that it's already sold out by the time it gets to them and as I said, I do think BSG have actually increased the number. I think he's selling like 10,000 per refresh now. So that's extending the amount of time that, that you have to go and nab one of these things. But I've never failed with this method. I just wait for this to come down and then just flick between the two until it's visible on his actual trader page and just buying it directly from here. So hopefully this helps and you'll be able to get some fuel in your hideout if you're struggling. So as usual, if you learned something or enjoyed today's video and want to support the channel, then please consider dropping a like and a sub as it helps with visibility for those who haven't found me yet on YouTube. To see when I'm streaming, you can follow me on Twitter and Twitch, where I'm currently live twice a week, once on Friday, 9pm UK time for the Scav Talk podcast, which you can check out the link for in the description below, and a regular Tarkov stream on Saturday at 2pm UK time for three hours. With all that said, I'll see you next time, and have fun in your raids.